I have too much stuff up here this morning. I'm going to try the lapel mic and see if that helps. Again, I do not have a preacher's voice. I do not resonate. So, and some people, even my wife said sometimes she has a hard time hearing me. So we'll see if uh, this works. I would like to mention a couple of things. Number one, uh, Sunday school class is uh, going to be different next week and for the next few weeks because we're going to use uh, a book and a video series called Clarifying the Bible. I have uh, used this, taught it three or four different times. Mitch Mayer, you can look it up. Uh, there are books for it. We're going to start without them. And it's just, uh, it's called Clarifying the Bible, a media experience to help make sense of it all. And I, I just think it's great for beginners, but it's great for all of us. And I uh, would encourage you to come to Sunday school class. Uh, each one or each one. Again, you can do that for the uh, chili cook-off and the quartet coming. But uh, in a greater sense, it's each one, reach one. It's how do we share Christ with others? And I put, I don't know, maybe 14, 15 booklets on the back table there. And when they're gone, they're gone. I just happen to have these at home. And it's how can I share my faith without an argument? I don't know whether I need to give Sam a personal copy. Yeah, I'm going to take one of those. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I know Sam wouldn't have been in an argument anymore. <laughs> and again, you know, find somebody and invite them and give them that's what this is in the, in the bulletin for. Uh, we're doing so many different things here today. And I know I'm going to wind up moving some of this. We've been looking, Charlie and I have looked for a bigger table. Just to say, <laughs> haven't found one yet. You are going to be helping with the, the message this morning. And before we do any of that, let's pray. Father, it is, uh, and it should be a blessing to us to be in your house this morning, to come and worship you, share in times of prayer, reading your word, of singing uh, great hymns. And Father, we pray that uh, all of what we have done so far would uh, be a way of us uh, lifting you up and giving you the praise that uh, you deserve. And Father, be with us now as we uh, turn and look at a passage in your word, but uh, doing a little bit uh, different with it uh, this morning. So I ask your presence. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our basic text this morning is taken from... Uh, the, you can just call, call it Haggai if you want to. That works. Uh, that's one of the pronunciations. Another is Haggai. But I think Haggai is just the easiest way uh, to get through and, and use this. And So we're, we're going to look at uh, verses uh, 1 through 11, but we're also going to look at Ezra chapter 4, uh, two verses. And we're going to zero in on... Uh, well, this week and next week, this is a two-part sermon. And I told 
Janelle on Tuesday that this is what might happen, uh, that it would turn into two parts and that's, that's what's going to happen. And I am going pri primarily going to teach this morning, preach uh, a little, and uh, save the ending for next week is what, what will happen. And you are going to give me some material for the message next week. You don't know that yet, but you are. And you're going to, maybe a little bit later, Jeff and Sam can help me do a handout here. And you're all going to participate. Or you, you have the opportunity. You don't have to, but uh, uh, something that we would use next week. And as you can tell, we are back in the Old Testament. And I want you to take out the chart that is in your bulletin. And I'm going to get rid of a couple of things here. And I have a little chart like yours, and I have a big chart that I made, I don't know, probably 10, 12 years ago, and I keep uh, in, in my room so that I, I can go back to it. The first thing I would, uh, if you have a pen or pencil, actually you're going to need one later if you pull it out of the pew. Uh, I don't, this is what I gave to Janelle. I didn't, I don't know actually when I got this one because the one I have at home does not have, at the top of this, it says basicsofthebible.com. Uh, that is a dead address. It's basicsofthebible.org. And I, I'm guessing that uh, years ago when they started this, it was a commercial site, but they're not really selling anything on that site. And so they changed it to basicsofthebible.org. This has been uh, helpful to me, and I, I hope it is helpful to you today and that you're able to follow this. What I'd like to have you do is start looking at the middle of it, up and down, with, at the orange, okay? What's in the middle is the orange, and if you go all the way over to the left-hand side of that middle, you'll see question mark dash 2000 BC. And even to the left of that, uh, this is a timeline, okay? It goes from whenever God created the world to at the end over on the right-hand side, 450 BC, which was the end of the Old Testament period. If you go back and look on the left again, you have uh, people, and I, and I don't know why they use gray, that's a little harder to, to see and read. And then you have events, you kind of have to read that sideways. And so you can follow the people all the way across, the main people, and you can follow the events that happened uh, all through the Old Testament. It's a great timeline, okay, of the Old Testament. Now, if you look in the upper right-hand corner, look at the red history, the green poetry, the blue prophecy, and that is how all of the books of the Old Testament are grouped or organized. You could call it a genre, uh, but it's, it's history, poetry, prophecy. Now, there's only one problem with that, and that is uh, we lose the, the timeline, we lose the chronology if you actually read through the Old Testament that way. How many books in the Old Testament? Anybody tell me? There are 66 books in the Bible. There are 27 books in the New Testament. So that leaves how many books in the Old Testament? 39. Okay. 39 books in the Old Testament. And if you still look in the upper right-hand corner, history, poetry, prophecy, there are 17 history books. There are five poetry books. And there are 17 books of prophecy. So that kind of comes out with a, almost a, a nice balance. And if you have memorized the books of the Old Testament, I would not embarrass anybody. I, I've memorized them. I don't know how many years ago and how many different times. 
And if you put me to it, and I'm not going to take the time to do it, but I could get through all the way through up to the 12 minor prophets. And I have to keep memorizing them over and over again to get them, get all of them right. But if you memorize the books, you memorize them in the order in which they are in, in, in the Bible, okay? Now, what I want you to do is to look at the red rectangles that have numbers in them. Look at the green rectangles and look at the blue rectangles. And now you will get an idea, and just stay with me on this, but that uh, the actual order of how things, you know, the timeline, the chronology of the Bible does not match, you know, putting history, poetry, and prophecy all separate. There's a reason I'm, I'm doing this this morning because it re relates to Ezra and uh, our, our main scripture here with uh, Haggai. So they are not in chronological order. Uh, the red ones do not all come first if you go from left to right on that orange timeline. Most of them do. But you see other books that are red ones that are right above like number three, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, number five, Ruth, First Chronicles, Second Chronicles, they fit in, okay, with the others. And actually, when you get to Chronicles, I mean, what you're seeing there is an actual overlap, maybe a different viewpoint and something different in there, but an overlap of uh, the other historical books. For four, at least 40 years, it had bothered me that I could not read the Bible that had all of the Old Testament material in a chronological order. And I have a folder in my file cabinet at home, at least that thick, of what I did back in would have been the uh, probably late 70s or early 80s, where I just started going through and trying to make my own timeline. Remember, this is back then, it's pre internet days. It's easy to do all this now, and, and that's why you, you'll find tons of these uh, out on, on the internet. But what you then have in front of you is a chart of the Old Testament with the books in almost a complete chronological order. It's not totally complete because there are a lot of things that could be done with it. But what you see is, for example, if you look over on the left-hand side, you have see number 18, Job. It's the 18th book in, in, the, in the Old Testament. Yet it's right there with Genesis. They really don't know when Job was written or what, it, uh, what part of the Bible it belongs in. I have another uh, Bible. matter of fact, I think it's one of the ones I brought with me. That it puts it right at the end of the Old Testament because of the suffering that Job goes through is similar to the suffering that uh, Ju Judea uh, and the Northern Kingdom, uh, Israel, went through after being removed from their land. That's, but I, I, I tend to agree that it's a, Job is a patriarch and should be back where they're at the beginning. So you see these in, uh, put in their chronological order, at least that somebody has come up with. That then led and I decided I wanted to have bigger books and more books than what Sam had up here two weeks ago. Uh, this is what's called the narrated Bible. And this is, uh, I think the publication date of this is 1984, if I remember correctly, 1984. So it would have been in 1984, just after that, when I finally had a chronological Bible in my hands. And it, it, it's, it's quite fascinating. And all of the, not all of the scripture, most of the, this one, for example, puts all of the Psalms together. Now, I have another Bible I brought with me, and you'll see some others where the Psalms are distributed 
throughout the new the old testament according to either what they're talking about or who wrote them all the ones that david wrote would fit in that chronological period but uh probably 84 94 04 probably all the way to 2014 this would have been the, the chronological bible that uh, that we had. Then, in uh, maybe, and it's it's too bad it's falling apart. But this is a life application study Bible, a chronolo chronological chronological life application study Bible. And so, I, you can open anywhere here in the, in the Old Testament. And you're going to go from, uh, here's Hezekiah, uh, where, they, where they're talking about, which is in 2 Kings, and, and then we have Isaiah, and you have Psalms distributed throughout. And in 2015, Jerry Lee and I, uh, this was our read through the Bible chronologically year. And it was a, a great experience. You're welcome to come and, and take a look at, at this uh, after church. I just, I have uh, gained from, from just seeing the Old Testament and even the New Testament, because these Bibles have the New Testament in a, in a chronological order. Uh, one of the other things that relates to this, John MacArthur, and I may have mentioned this back at Easter time, but he's taken the four gospels and put them together into chronology of Jesus. And he's taken all of Paul's letters and put them together in a chronology. That's John MacArthur's material. So uh, this, this is, has meant something to me. And I'm going to ask you now to uh, take your Bible or take a pew Bible and open your bi Bibles. I'm, I have my NIV here, but just to be different, I'm going to open the chronological Bible and if I have it marked in the right place here. But I, I want I want you well. Let's do it this way first. I'll take my NIV Bible and I open it to Ezra. In my NIV Bible, chapter five of Ezra is page three hundred and ninety-four. Now I take and I go over to my mark here for Haggai. Hey and I'm over at page 787. So even though they happen at the exact same time in a normal Bible, I jump, what, 300, almost 400 pages to read two, two, two verses in Ezra and then go and read Haggai. So what I'm going to do, though, I take my chronological Bible, I open to page 1162, and I start reading. And this is what I read. Haggai and Zechariah prophecy, Ezra, chapter 4, 24 through 5, 1. So the work on the temple of God in Jerusalem had stopped, and it remained at a standstill until the second year of the reign of King Darius of Persia. Chapter 5, verse 1. At that time, the prophet Haggai and Zechariah, the prophets Haggai and Zechariah, son of Edo, prophesied to the Jews in Judah and Jerusalem. They prophesied in the name of God of Israel, who was over them. Now, what do you think is right below that in the chronological Bible? Haggai 1, 1 through 11. And 
again, I, I enjoy reading chronological uh, Bible, and it helped me to a picture. This is what we're going to do for three or four or five weeks in Sunday school when we start this, because it's a, an overview of the whole Bible. It's called clarifying the Bible. So turn to Haggai, and if you got the two places there, I'm going to read 1 through 11. On August 29th of the second year of King Darius's reign, the Lord gave a message through the prophet Haggai to Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to, the, to Jeshua, son of Jehoshaphat, the high priest. This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies says. This, that's the New Living Translation in the Old Testament. Of, Thus says, saith the Lord. Uh, it doesn't all the way through, but I, I really, I really relate to that. This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies says. The people are saying, "The time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord." Then the Lord sent this message through the prophet Haggai. Why are you living in luxurious houses while my house lies in ruin? This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. And again, it depends on your translation. Con consider your ways. This one says, look at what's happening to you. You have planted much, but harvest little. You eat, but are not satisfied. You drink, but are still thirsty. You put on clothes, but cannot keep warm. Your wages disappear as though you were putting them in pockets filled with holes. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Consider your ways, or look at what's happening to you. Or NIV is a little bit different. Verse 8, now go up into the hills, bring down timber, and rebuild my house. Then I will take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. You hope for riches, for rich harvests, but they were poor. And when you brought your harvest home, I blew it away. Why? Because my house lies in ruins, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Well, all of you are busy building your own fine houses. It's because of you that the heavens withhold the dew and the earth produces no crops. I have called for a drought on your fields and hills, a drought to wither the grain and grapes and olive trees and all your other crops, a drought to starve you and your livestock and to ruin everything you have worked so hard to get. So there's our scripture. <laughs> the, the, in a sense, the background of the scripture, uh, it was in 536 BC that about 50,000 Jews returned to Judah and, and Babylon. Uh, Judah and Israel, uh, at least according to Old Testament, nobody ever returned from Israel. And if you look at all the kings of Israel, the northern kingdom, this is after David and Solomon. Uh, and this is in Halley's handbook. They're all listed as wicked. Not a good one in the back. So we're talking about Judah here. 50,000 Jews returned to Judah. So that would be about 2,558 years ago that they came back to their land. And they rebuilt the altar and then began offering sacrifices. And two years, they, they completed the foundation for the temple. And then they ran into opposition and uh, they quit. And so that's what we just read about here. That, that's what happened. Hey, Haggai itself is the second shortest book in the Old Testament. It's only two chapters. What's the other shortest book? Again, one of the minor prophets. And they're not minor because they're minor in importance, but they're all shorter. Although I think it's Zechariah that's 14 chapters, which is two more than Daniel, which is one of the major 
profits. But uh, Haggai is called the minor, minor prophet. Poor guy, not very important. Minor. But again, that's not what it means. Uh, maybe, his, maybe he's an old man. But we don't know. But in verses 5 and 7, we hear God telling the people, consider your ways. Or, and I think it's the NIV, consider how things are going for you. These Israelites who had come back to their homeland and uh, they had put their own needs ahead of God. And they were obviously, according to scripture, they were not considering their ways as to how they should be living. And because they were not placing God first, God was punishing them just as he did their ancestors I mean, throughout the, the rest of the, uh, the Old Testament. Things were not going well for them. Uh, look in verses 6, verse 9, 10, 11. Uh, and what God did there in verse 11, the droughts and the crop failures. So uh, through the prophet Haggai, uh, God tells the remnant, and they are the remnant, consider your ways. We will get the rest of the story next week. And we might even read through all of uh, chapter two. By the way, that idea of consider your ways, uh, Haggai uses five times in those two chapters. He uses those words. I believe that I'm, I'm here this morning preaching to the, the choir, and I believe that God uh, blesses us and, and does bless us, uh, all of us who are gathered here this morning. But I still, uh, we're never perfect, are we? And I think always we have to be told to consider our ways. So I want you to think about what God is telling you about considering your ways and we will take I know it's 1130 we'll take at least five minutes if not more maybe if, if Jeff and Sam I have more of these but you uh, yeah. just make sure everybody gets one and what I'm asking you to do I should have kept one so I could read it. That's <laughs> uh, a blank. <laughs> if you're going to blank one, ask for one that's not blank. Okay. I'm going to just steal one here for this, this is simply, okay, you have verses four and five there. 